So good morning and uh, welcome to this open information day on the IMI third call for proposals. Um, it's really a pleasure to see you all here. Um, as you will realize, this open information day was really conceived to help and to provide useful and meaningful information to uh, all of you interested or considering applying for this new call for proposal. And uh, indeed, with our communication uh, manager, Kim, we really try to give you different perspectives in order, indeed, to uh, help you possibly deciding, we hope, to apply in one of our um, uh, next uh, topics proposed. What uh, we will do, I will first give a general uh, introduction. Then uh, Magali Poineau, who is in charge of uh, intellectual property in our executive office, will give a presentation because I'm sure that you are all aware that there have been and there are still discussions ongoing about how to organize IP management in the type of consortium we are building and we saw that it was important that you have really the right information at uh, the right time. Now, if you are considering to apply for our project, I think that it's critical from the beginning to consider the following. Obviously, as for any uh, grant opportunities, if you are considering to apply, is that be because you are looking for additional resources for additional grants? And that's fine. Indeed, as you know, we uh, have a significant budget to commit and uh, to commit for, I would say, all stakeholders involved in uh, drug research and development. That's fine, but it's not sufficient. I think it's critical that any potential applicant understand that indeed IMI can provide additional, sometimes significant funding. That's true. But if you join IMI, just consider that the two additional points are critical. You should join IMI also because you are interested in patient-centric biomedical pharmaceutical research. And if you realize that indeed, if you are interested to translate your research, your results, your knowledge into activities and uh, eventually products useful for patients, you have to collaborate and especially collaborate with the industry. So the third critical condition to join us is to be open to collaboration with industry and in our case, especially with large pharmaceutical companies. And I think it's really critical bef before you prepare your expression of interest that you seriously consider the three points because this will be the uh, critical condition for the success of your application and at the end for the success of the IMI projects. So it's critical that you indeed realize that what is IMI is a public-private partnership in which the private partner as founding member is indeed composed for, uh, from a large series of pharmaceutical companies which are on this slide. And those companies, this was already several years ago, discuss with the Commission how to improve the situation of the pharmaceutical sector uh, across Europe. And uh, to improve the situation, they uh, commit themselves to invest significant resources in joint public-private uh, consortium. The public partner is indeed the European Commission. And the European Commission, after extensive discussion with this European Federation of Pharmaceutical Companies, indeed agreed to mobilize significant resources 
which are part of the uh, seven framework program to indeed join forces with the pharmaceutical industry to develop these collaborative projects. And these resources, which uh, consist of 1 billion euros committed until the end of 2017, matching the contribution in form of in-kind contribution of the companies, is uh, dedicated to funding of academia, small and medium-sized enterprise, other non-profit public organization, patients organization, sometimes regulatory agencies. Now, this is a public-private partnership. So if indeed we are there to help the pharmaceutical sector, to listen to the needs of the industry, because there is a strong public component, we have to focus our activities on the common interest between industry, pharmaceutical industry, and the society at large. And to summarize this, you have to uh, realize that what the ultimate goal of IMI is, is to create in Europe a favorable environment to develop the type of research and development activities that are needed to improve the situation of the people who suffer from disease for which we don't have satisfactory treatment. So it's very important that you understand that what is common here at the end is patience. And we do our best to really focus our activities on project on uh, patient-centric uh, activities. This environment, uh, you know the environment. If you think about uh, patients, obviously uh, patients are in direct contact with uh, <coughs> physicians. Uh, they know that the pharmaceutical industry is critical to provide them with the most efficient and safe drugs. They know that this is regulated by government agencies, by regulatory agencies. They know that the pharmaceutical industry depends on academia and biotech SMEs, which are an extremely important component of this environment. There are new important players which appear in this environment, in what some economists uh, called ecosystem, which is uh, the digital healthcare companies. If you look at what companies like Microsoft or Google are doing now in the health sector, you will see that more and more data regarding health will be uh, managed in a different and hopefully more efficient way in the future, again, for the ultimate benefit of patients. I will come back to this because knowledge management, management of data, of results, is also at the core of IMI. So our ambition is indeed to help to have all these uh, partners, all these stakeholders working together. And we think that Europe has a strength there. I think that because of our cultural diversity, uh, we, are, we, we, we are in a good position to foster these uh, collaborative uh, networks, and we would like to build on this. Now, it's also very important that you have well in mind the two key concepts underlying the project for which you will apply or project in which you are involved. Those key concepts are open innovation and pre-competitive research. What mean open innovation? It means that most pharmaceutical companies, as other large companies, for example, in the information technology sector, now realize that they cannot do everything in-house from basic discovery to marketing or post-marketing activities, which was the model of the pharmaceutical companies in the past. They now realize that even if they are very large companies, there is always more expertise, more knowledge outside than inside, and the pharmaceutical company now realize that they have to take advantage 
of you know these important sources of uh, knowledge, these uh, external competence which indeed are outside their own organization. And this offers unique opportunities for those in academia, in SMEs, who are interested to see one day their efforts translated into um, products useful for patients. So, and you will have examples of this uh, in the second part of this morning. I think that to work with pharmaceutical companies, and as you will see, uh, there are a number of uh, <coughs> problems and questions which are still present. But I think it's important that to consider that if we can solve this problem, we are there in a unique position to indeed uh, implement the type of collaboration which again is necessary for the patient. So I think that for academia, for SMEs again, they should consider IMI project as primarily as opportunities. Now, pre-competitive research in a, is another key concept to understand. Public-private partnership, you will see there are a number around the world, especially in the pharmaceutical sector. Very often, companies establish privileged partnership with given universities or establish privileged partnership with SMEs. Here, companies decide to work together. So you have to imagine, and that's a very important dimension of IMI, that those companies which, as you know, can struggle very strongly when it comes to market issues, realize their mutual interest to collaborate at certain stage of drug development. And when I will briefly present the third call topics, I will give you examples and hopefully you will understand why companies are indeed willing, are keen to work together on certain questions when it comes to the development of better tools, new methodology which are necessary for drug development. And the, the, the reason why companies want to use open innovation and pre-competitive research is because they understand that understanding the mechanism of disease, the mechanism of action of drugs, the mechanism of side effects is more and more critical. And for this, they have to work together, especially when it comes to patient stratification, to develop of biomarkers. They have a joint interest to work together and uh, eventually then to uh, have, uh, <coughs> for example, biomarkers that can be acceptable by regulatory agencies. They also realize that in this new era of personalized medicine, when court of patient will be more and more difficult to assemble because we will have really to target very specific patient population, they need collaboration, especially, of course, with uh, academic clinical teams. 